God. Well, I'm glad to be here, but most importantly, I'm glad that Jesus is here. So why don't we give Jesus a hand? I'm excited to be here tonight. Thankful that Brother Marlowe made a way for us to be here once again with you all. Uh, Pastor Dexter, we're glad Brother, that you're here with us. I believe that God is going to do some wonderful things among us Amen. this weekend. Amen. I believe it. All I needed was two, and I think I got two. Oh, yeah. but, but let's try it again. I said, I believe <laughs> that God's going to do some great things yeah. like this, this weekend. I don't believe you're here by accident. I just cannot embrace that God's people are anywhere at any time by accident. For the scripture declares to us that the steps of good men are ordered of the Lord. So I want you to understand whether you realize it or not, you are here by the divine appointment of God to experience something in your life. Oh God. I don't know what you came here with. I don't know what you came here under. I don't know how the devil's attacking you. I have no clue. But one thing I do know is that no weapon that is formed against me shall be able to prosper. And I just believe before you get out of here, before I get out of here this weekend, I has not seen. Jesus Christ in the fullness of time God has sent forth you I don't think they heard what I said so I'm going to come over here and tell you I said just as much as in the fullness of time God sent forth Jesus in the fullness of time God has sent forth you that means that you are not here by accident you are not an accidental birth you are not an unplanned birth you may have been shocked, but before you were formed in the belly, God said, I knew you. So you are not here by accident. You are not in this generation by accident. But when God had prepared the world for you to be here, he sent forth you, born of a woman, to bring about a greater purpose. Because of a good night between your mother and father. I'm telling you, you're not here for that reason. Your parents were the vehicle that God used to send you forth right on top. They are not responsible for you. They are only the canal that God sent you through. But God reserves you and I. You say, why are you saying all that, Pastor Jared? Because I want you, to, if I don't do nothing, 
before I get out of Bradenton this weekend. I want to put a heavy responsibility on your shoulders mm -hmm. for the generation that you live in. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, brother. There you go. go. Say it. I want you to understand nobody from the White House to the Congress to the Senate's got the answer. That's right. Nobody. 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 I want you to understand that God is letting this nation rock and reel. Yes. Not up under the evil of the world but under the compromise of the church. If you look in the word of God, any time a nation would come under the judgment of God, it was not due to the wickedness of the nation, That's right. but it was due to the wickedness of the people of God yeah. in the nation. But I heard the man of God stand up and give us a scripture. We will return unto the Lord. I don't know about you, but I plan on returning unto the Lord. There's nobody got the answer to the economy. But if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal them. The scripture tells us, and I'm going to read here in a minute, but I'm giving you enough right now, really. The scripture tells us that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Now listen, church. It is easy to compromise and delude ourselves to be comfortable to the world. Amen. But we were not called to be comfortable to the world. Oh God. For God said, Behold, I set in Zion yeah. a stumbling stone. Yeah. No, 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 not a stumbling stone. Stumbling block. No, stumbling block. Yep. No. What is it? It says, Behold, I set in Zion a, uh, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, and he that believeth shall not make haste. But he that was to be the cornerstone. Yes. Became what? A stumbling, a stumbling, a stumbling block. Amen. Thank you for correcting me on that. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, is that you were never called to the world. That's right. To be a support system to the Come world. Come on. You were called to the world to trip them up. Come on. Amen. Amen. You were called to the world to stop their movement toward That's destruction. Right. Yeah. That's right. To knock them to their knees, if you would. Yes. If you are in the world and the world accepts you, you are not living for God. I know that's tight, but it's right. Come on, I said, if you are in the world and the world accepts you, you are not living for God. you serve. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, you are not called to be embraced by people that do not know the Lord. You are not called to be embraced by them. In fact, for the most part, you will be rejected by them. And if you're not experiencing some opposition from the world in your life, you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. to start it off right this, this evening because we can get stirred up, we can get hyped up, we can get emotional, but if we do not change, I said if we do not change, it has just been a bunch of emotional hype, but I don't know about you, I didn't come here to be hyped, I came here to be changed. You know the old song, you won't leave here like you can. In Jesus' name, bound, oppressed, tormented, sick or lame, for the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same, and you won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. I didn't come here to be the same. 
compromised world, the world's always been compromised. Come on. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. We're living in a compromised church. That's yes. right. Uh-huh. Come on, brother. Yes. Where well, the preaching has been more. Yes. To pollute the saints, mm -hmm. to dilute their conviction, mm -hmm. so that they are not offensive to the world, mm -hmm. than it has been to strengthen their resolve mm -hmm. and to strengthen their backbone mm -hmm. so that they can lift their head up mm -hmm. yes. yeah. right and walk in this world mm -hmm. and walk in the light. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. 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 Listen, guys. We are in the light. Yeah. We are. The light. the light of the world. Yeah. A city that is set upon a hill cannot be hid. That's right. That's right. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but upon a candlestick so that all who are in the house can oh. receive the light. Yeah. Oh Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, the world does not need us to hide the light right. to make them feel comfortable. All right. But my God, let your my light God. shine here yeah. so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I want you to understand the church will never have a proper love of the world or love for the world until we leave our love of the world. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Because as long as we love the things that are in the world, uh -huh. we will never, ever stand our ground. Amen. That's because right. then it would convict mm -hmm. us That's because right. of our love for it. That's right. Yeah. 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 But if you ever leave your love of the world, no. for Jesus said, he that loveth the world, uh -huh. the love of the Father is not in him. Yeah, that's right. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life. Yeah. These are not of the Father, but of the world. Yeah. You will never try to pull your friends, your family, nor your community out of the pits of hell as long as you enjoy staying there with them. and not walking according to the spirit uh -huh. you will never be convicted to do those things which you ought not because your yeah. flesh is outsounding your spirit right. Come on, yeah. Yeah. Glory. listen Glory. if I take two dogs and I feed this one all the time and I starve this one who's going to grow the one I feed yes. uh -huh. the one that I starve will become anemic and weak and feeble and die. Yeah, that's right. So as long as I spend 90% of my week living for the world on, and barely 10% of my week living for the Lord, guess who rules my life? I didn't come to be ruled by the flesh. Uh -huh. The flesh has tried to destroy me since I was born. That's right. Yes. That's right. It has. Yes. It's done everything in its power. And for all of you saints of God out here, I'm going to correct something if you think this. If you think that somehow God has put these temptations in your life to see how you respond to them, and so it must be God's fault that I walked away. You have lost your mind. Yeah. Yeah. All right. 
For the Bible said we are drawn out by our own lust. <laughs> and tempted by our own lust. Yes. Come on, somebody. Come on. It's in you, child. Yeah. But Jesus came so that those things would not dominate and destroy you. He said, fear not, for I have overcome the world. Be ye holy, even as I am holy. Jesus did not come to empower you to sin. He came to empower you to overcome the sin. And there has to be a generation that says enough's enough. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the world's dark and gloomy. All over the world. I mean, all over the world. And we can all sit there and cry and weep and lament and mourn for the darkness. I decided a long time ago I'm not weeping for the darkness. I'm rejoicing that I can tell that there is darkness. For the Bible said, if any man be in darkness, how great is that darkness? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In essence, when you come into darkness, the darkness that you come into is so void and vast yeah. that you cannot determine the greatness of the darkness. Mm, yeah. That's the reason why people of God, when they begin to dabble in sin, they keep backing into the darkness. Mm. Because at some point they can no longer determine this is dark, this is dusk, this is light. They're in such gross darkness that they can't even tell how great the darkness is. Amen. Amen. But at some point there has to be a generation that says we're done with the darkness. We are finished with the darkness. I am no longer a child of the night, but I am a child of the day. I, I don't know if y'all are hearing me. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I am a child of the day. I no longer entertain those things that are in darkness. That it is unspeakable to, it is, uh, what is it? Uh, in other words, it's impermittable to speak, ashamed to speak of those things that are done in the darkness. Right. I am not a child of the darkness. Right. I am a child of the light. Right. And if I'm going to be a child of the light, I'm going to live in the light. Right. I'm going to exist in the light. Right. I want you to understand something, church. Holiness is not a bad word. Right. Holiness is an ugly word. And holiness is not a word reserved for Sundays. But your lifestyle must become that of holiness. For without holiness, no man shall see God. And what the church needs to do right now is come back to holiness. Come on, somebody. These old saints, we can say, oh, we're a contemporary church. We're a new age church. You're crazy. You're insane. church. And in the old-fashioned church, 
when a pastor called for church, you did not have better things to do. When the pastor said, we're coming for prayer, meaning you did not find something to watch on the television. Come on, somebody. But there was something that burned on the inside of us. And like David, we could say we were glad when they said unto us, let us go into the house of the Lord. Turn us back to that. Praise the Lord. David said, this one thing have I desired, and that will I also seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to inquire in it, to behold the beauty of his temple to or to behold the beauty of the lord to inquire in his temple is that your heartbeat yes. is that your heartbeat is that your heartbeat or have we become so overwhelmed and saturated by the world that church is the last thing on our list when nothing else is going on I'm just wondering, church, because the church is not increasing at this moment. The church is declining. If ever the church ought to grow, it ought to be in times of darkness. For the light never shines brighter than when darkness begins to descend. You could take this light out of this banister, take it outside, turn it on. <clears throat> and it be in the middle of the day and you will not tell that the light has come on mm -hmm. right. but you let the darkness fall uh -huh. yes. and turn the light on You're right. yes. Hallelujah. you can tell the light has come oh, yes. 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 I told our church several weeks ago I said uh, what was it, it was in Antioch they were first called Christians, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. and I said Christian was not a term of endearment they didn't come up to us, Sister Marlowe, and say, oh, you, oh, praise God, you're one of the Christians. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're, I can tell you're a Christian. Oh, brother, brother, oh, you are just a Christian man. That was not what they did. No. They were mocking them, making fun of them, belittling them. They were saying, oh, they're those Christians. And I asked the church, I said, when's the last time somebody could call you a Christian? My God. Not because you go to church, but because your lifestyle befits that of a Christian. Because they see you in the church worshiping on Sunday, and they don't see you in the club breaking it down on Saturday. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. One of the leading philosophers of our time said, the largest cause of atheism in the world is hypocritical Christians. That's right. Come on. We're driving them to not believe. Because our lifestyle does not befit that which believe. Let me tell you something. One of the greatest, one of the greatest examples to the non-believer in the word of God that Jesus Christ had come was not because they saw him with their own eyes. But the lifestyle of his followers right. were so to that, they were so dramatically changed yeah. and so willing to lay down everything they were, even their life, yeah. that the gospel might be forwarded. And they said, those are Christians. Yes. 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 Come on, somebody. Yes. I don't know if you came to hear me hoop, but I'm not hooping tonight. I came to get real with the church tonight. I came to tell us tonight that if we're going to have revival, it will not be because you fly me down from Kingsport and hear me preach. It will be because the word of God grabs a hold of your heart and you fall on your face and say, I must go. In every generation, there has to be those that will stand up. It's not popular and it's not easy. In fact, it's very difficult. Yes. But it's supposed to be. Yes. Uh -huh. The world is not supposed to just sit there and go, whenever y'all are ready, come on out and we're going to listen to what you say and follow you and do whatever you tell us to do. <laughs> this is a sacrifice. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. This is you laying down your life. No greater love hath a man than this, that he should lay down his life for his friends. There is no greater love that we can have, church then we lay down our life so that another can live. Amen. We lay down our personal, all of our rejection issues. Amen. I know there are people in here with rejection issues. Mm -hmm. That's one of the leading causes that stop you from witnessing to the world mm -hmm. is because you have issues of rejection. Mm -hmm. 
And the reason why the church does not witness like we should is because we are afraid they will turn us down. Yeah, come on, brother. Somebody asked me one time, they said, well, what would you do if you were talking to somebody and they turned you down? They, they made fun of you, I would say, next. 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 Listen, next. it's not my responsibility to have a response. That's right. Paul next. said, Paul planted, Apollos watered, God gave the increase. So that it was not to him that planted, nor to him that watered, but unto God who gives the increase. Yeah. Sarah knew how to fix the problem. Yeah. 
She went to Abraham and she said, put out the bond woman and her son. The son of the bond woman shall not be heir with my son. Amen. I can't imagine what went through Abraham's mind. Because you understand this was Abraham's firstborn child. And he had to have some type of emotional connection to Hagar because of the intimate time spent together producing Ishmael. And I'm sure in his spirit he got mad because God had to deal with Abraham. He said, Abraham, hearken unto the voice of thy wife, Sarah. He said, you've got to put out that boy and his mother. And I always ask the Lord, Lord, why did Ishmael have to go and Isaac stay? And the Lord spoke to me. He said, because if you let your mistakes stay around long enough, it will mock your miracle. Oh. Right now, y'all need to tell them I am going on. I don't care what 
you need. I don't care where you came from. I don't care what our history is. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. And behold, all things will become new. I'm going on. Glory. Because we're never going to return unto righteousness. As long as we're still being manipulated by people. But we've got to return. We've got to return. And listen. The Bible says that a nation that forgets God shall be turned into hell. I want you to understand. We are of the nation. For the Bible said we are a peculiar people, a chosen generation, a holy nation, a royal priesthood. We are the nation. Yes. And the church has come into a place where we're we're going into sensationalism. I know it's tight, but it's right. We're coming out of truth and into sensationalism. We are fulfilling the prophecy where it says they will heap unto themselves teachers having itching ears. Yes. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Right. We're beginning to fulfill the prophecy uh -huh. because now we're filling mass arenas to give them motivational speeches. Hey. Yes. Let me tell you something. I, you know, I, I deal with a lot of people and I preach in a lot of churches and you know, we got this new prophecy movement going around. It's not new. It's probably been around about 10 years. And what they do is, Brother Matthew, come here real quick. I'm going to use you. Is they pull people out. And they look for vulnerable people. Let me tell you, this is a game and a gimmick. And I'm just exposing it for you. And they pull people out. Now look cast down, brother, like you're depressed. And they say, that man deserves an Academy Award. They say, Brother, the Spirit of the Lord has revealed to me that you're depressed. I have watched them bring up old women in walkers and tell them, tell the women that the Spirit of the Lord revealed to them they had arthritis. I said, my Lord, you must have the same spirit because he did it to me too. But I see you're depressed and the Lord wants, you, wants to lift you up. The Lord wants to encourage you. The Lord wants to bless you. And they pray over them, spit a little bit on them, and then they fall over. And, uh, I, I, the night is not over, brother. But, but ultimately, maybe the Lord is dealing with that man, and he doesn't need to be uplifted. Maybe the Lord is working something in his spirit. We don't need prophets that stand up and prophesy goodness to the people. Prophets were never Truth. brought to prophesy good things. When a prophet Truth. came to the land, the people began to quake because they knew there was a word for God about to be delivered. And it was not because they were acting good. It wasn't because they were behaving themselves. Prophets operated on three realms. They came to expose the disobedience and rebellion of the people of God. Amen. They did not come to say, oh, the Lord's going to bless you. I see dollar signs over you. Why would I, I've watched them wow. prophesy dollar signs over people that wouldn't pay tithes. Yeah. The devil is a liar. Yeah. How will a man rob God in tithes and in offerings? Yeah. Amen. Amen. God ain't going to bless you for stealing from him. Yeah. <laughs> but he, they, the prophet came to say, you're Rebellious. Yeah. yeah. Amen. You have left God. Yeah. And because of that, the judgment of God is coming. Uh -huh. That will not get the church shouting. <laughs> when you say all hell is about to break loose, nobody's up there. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> and that's why preachers won't pray it. Uh, won't preach it. I'm not looking for a dance. I'm looking for a change. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. And they would say the judgment of God is coming. But then their, their third declaration was that after the indignation has overpassed, 
Restoration is coming. We're getting the cart before the horse. Good things are going to come. But it will only be after God deals with his people. Let me tell you something. If you're looking for judgment to come to the world, you're looking in the wrong place. Because judgment must first begin in the house of God. And I believe we've been under the judgment of God. Yes, we I believe we are. Yes. I believe the Lord is rocking us. Yes. And I'm telling you, if we will fall on our face, yes. and if we will repent to the God of heaven yes. for the lifestyle we live in the world, yes. uh, that looks nothing like we live in the church. Come on. Uh, All right. And if we will understand that we are not children of the world when we're there and children of God when we're here but because we have been born again we are the children of God everywhere Amen. 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 if we understand that Come on. and if we fall on our face again before the Lord and cry out to God in repentance I'm telling you you have never seen the revival that you will see in this last day our hearts. Yes. He's getting us ready. Yes. You know, I had somebody call me the other night. 